Outsider. So hello, Tony from the Outsider channel with you once again today. And today we're gonna get to the bottom of what the hell this thing is. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you, I didn't know what the hell it was either. Learning new things on the bike continues and that's what I'm going to offer you up today. I'm gonna give you some impressions after a couple of months riding the Seekers from Vorspring. I'm gonna tell you what the hell it is before we get on the trail, which is where we'll do some on the bike impressions. And then at the end of the video, this is how I like to do kind of impression review videos. I'm gonna sum everything up for you. The first trail we're gonna hit is TNA in Laguna Beach, one of my favorite trails, and that's the first time I rode it. And then we're gonna skip over to the bike park at Snow Valley where I just rode this past week. I've had a couple months to ride it, and I'm gonna give you guys my impressions at the end. And is this thing worth it? Is it just a gimmick? The ups, the downs, all the things. So stick around on the other side of this, and uh, we're gonna get down to business. So today I'm at Gravity Bicycles in Fullerton, California. That's my local bike shop and I back them. They're one of three shops that carry the Seekus and Vorspring as a brand and do the install service in-house. Today Mike's putting the Seekus on my YT Jeffsy Blaze. Quick little fun fact about Vorspring. They're a company out of BC, Canada and they've created the Seekus as an upgrade that promises the only air spring system to come close to the linear spring rate of a coil fork for the first two thirds of its travel. Basically by optimizing the beginning, middle and end portions of the stroke, the Seekus gives you a linear to progressive spring rate that coil springs and traditional air springs do not. I'm gonna get a little bit more detailed here so follow with me for just like another 20 seconds. Conventional air springs have a very high initial spring rate but a very low spring rate in the middle of the stroke. This gives the spring curve a distinctive S shape which starts off steep then levels off a bit before steepening again at the end. The decreasing spring rate in the beginning stroke is known as the digressive phase of the spring curve, while the increasing spring rate towards the end is the progressive phase. In practice, this can make air springs feel harsh and abrupt when the suspension extends toward the start of the travel, let's say after a bump or you get in a hole. It's also compatible with most rock shocks and fox forks. It's a lot of information. Now let's go ride this thing and see what the hell it can do. Taking first ride on this guy on some trails that I know very well. Look at that, you guys. Let's get one. It's been a minute. One of the reasons I wanted to take it to this trail first too, because not only do I know it well, even though I haven't ridden it in a minute, this trail's got a little bit of everything. Switchbacks, turns up top, chunk, fast section in the middle, and then super chunk at the bottom. This thing's got bumpier over the summer. section very chattery that's the seek 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 is from far spring seek 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 the seek is your favorite product <laughs> i'm just kidding guys imagine if i did that the whole video sometimes it's just for me carry on Chunky chunk. Let's take a different line today. Ooh. Whoa. All right. More rocks are exposed for sure in this section than last time I was here. Wow. A lot more chunky. That's an actual drop now instead of a roller. Where the uh, the Seagus is really gonna show its stuff. On the long flat brake bumpy chatter. This is where I really, really feel it. It's a game changer like right now on fast terrain like this. Those little bumps just get sucked up in a balanced way and kind of almost feel like your arms are given a rest. 
I kind of like the loose factor here at Snow Valley after a while. It's like an acquired taste. It kind of becomes your fun friend for a bit. I really love this little hidden entrance to this black diamond. So loose. Oh, you good? So loose. <laughs> I do not trust this drop right now. New line here. Let's try this again. <laughs> kind of gnarly for a green trail, that's just me. All right, this is where I hand it back over to myself to give you guys more of an in-depth after the ride. Had some time on this thing. Real impressions off the trail. All right, we're back. I've been sitting here waiting for you to finish up watching all the clips so I can, uh, you know, speak to the things. So I'm gonna sum things up. What I like to do with these situations, with reviews, stuff like this is just give you the off the cuff stuff. How did it feel to me as a normal rider on the trails? The first thing I noticed right away was how plush the front end of my bike felt. I felt like it was almost too soft, to be honest with you, because I didn't trust it. You know when you have your suspension not really dialed in correctly and a whole thing just feels slacky? That's where it, this didn't do. So it, it felt like uh, in the chatter, where it was uh, very soft and, uh, and nimbly, sucking up all the stuff and balancing things out really nice. But when it got into the travel a little bit, it did what it was supposed to. The thing you want to happen in a fork, you want it to be soft where you want it and you want it to be kicking in. That's exactly what it was. Anything fast and chattery, this thing was like kind of just running over it. My arms felt less arm pump. It felt less jittery on the trail. It felt like I was um, more stable. But how did it feel on the trail in normal hits and things like that? It felt balanced. I, I keep using that word because that's exactly what it felt like. In the hits or going around turns, the fork didn't just jab in if I had my weight forward. It felt like it was balanced in that and sometimes before if you guys have gone into a hard switchback or a berm if you lean too far in uh, your fork kind of just feels like it's mashing down this felt like it didn't let that happen it gave me like a more of a balanced <laughs> vibe going into the turn. The negatives, uh, I, I always like to try to come up with negatives. I guess the only negative I found was that you have a thing on your bike. You have a new thingy It's over there on your bike. It doesn't barely weighs anything. It's just an air canister. It's placed in a way that's kind of like back in the back end of your fork so it's not like just sticking out. Would I recommend it? Hell yeah. I gotta, <laughs> now that I know it, and that I have it, and now I know it exists and I've been riding it, I don't really want to ride without it. It's like, uh, you know, when, you, when you're selling crack when you're a kid and you get the first one for free and then you're like, oh my God, I love crack. Uh, this is crack, basically. <laughs> this is my crack today. You know what dog food tastes like, do you? It tastes just like it smells. Delicious. Um, I never sold crack or did crack. Vorspring does offer one year full warranty and that's not only if uh, the product is defective, but if you crash on it, if it's your fault and you get this thing mashed up on some rocks, they'll get you another one. I think it's a good investment if you ride as much as I do, and I know some of you do, I would look into this, hit up Gravity, hit up Mike and Craig over there. If you have questions about the Seekus, hit me up too. I know a lot now after the fact. Uh, I'll answer them below. I get to every single comment. Like, subscribe, all the good stuff, guys. You know the drill. It really helps out the channel. And join me on Patreon if you want to get on group rides, early video releases, and product 
giveaways. That's my pitch and I'm sticking to it. Guys, I'll see you next week, same time, same day. The sickness is your face.